<clears throat> so three years ago, Tomo, one of F1's most favorite unofficial ambassadors, released a video where he talked about the perfect F1 track. I always loved his visual graphics twice as much as a normal person since I was originally a graphic designer. In this video, he uses his beautiful graphics to help describe a track that is a merger of six different tracks, creating a magnum opus of Formula One racing. Or so he says. How do we know if it's actually good if no one ever tries it? So I took up the challenge of the top comment on this video, and although I'm three years too late, I got to work. Before jumping into Blender and making hasty decisions, we need to keep some things in mind. This is the drawing that Tomu demonstrated as his dream F1 track. The flags are pretty self-explanatory, and the blue sections are just something that he added to connect the track better. The things we need to keep in mind start over here. Interlagos, turn one and two. Tomo said he loves the hard braking zone, followed by the dip down in the terrain, so we'll need to lower the ground here. Same for the S's in Suzuka, and since they're an uphill section of the track, we can just lower this whole section here to preserve the original elevation. And the exact same thing goes for this section over here on the left, where he mentions he wants elevation, and I'm guessing that the castle section in Baku isn't supposed to be flat either, so let's remember that one as well. Finally, with all this in mind, we can hop into Blender and start making stuff. My confidence was through the roof since after my last attempt at making a track, I've gotten a lot better, mainly thanks to Dime. I learned a lot just by watching his track making videos, so big shout out Dime, although that's probably not gonna do much. Keep in mind that due to my inexperience and laziness, I can recreate the track perfectly, so each section matches its real life counterpart one to one. With that in mind, here's how to do it. Make it plain and large, dissect, make it go around the shape, add some elevation, blah blah blah. After completing the outline of the track, I tried my best to make the elevation work. Keep in mind that at this stage, I am being extremely stupid and not realizing I can just... look it up? On... So I just eyeballed the change, like a professional would. Same goes for the castle section, I just kinda yanked it up. Real professional. Anyway, let's continue. Find textures, use textures, make a curb by creating a shallow cube, then duplicate. Wonderful! Now, make a curb texture, but not the boring red and white one, that's too noticeable and that's too safe. Keep licking Tomo's tailpipe by using his pink gray colors to make a texture in Photoshop. Export, use that one instead, curb base, done! Moist! Let's go for a test drive. See, when making a track for a set of course, you have to test curbs, and especially if you make them manually, because sometimes this can happen. And if you don't fix it before you spend hours placing them around the track, it can get very... <sighs> Frustrating. So I run over the curb and what happens? Nothing. Great. I keep driving to check out what the track feels like and for some reason there's night here. And then day again. And then night again. What the fuck? But then I realized I had made a terrible mistake. I'm making this track for Formula One, yet I test the curb with an Audi S1? <sighs> I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. I admit. So I test the track again, this time using just my keyboard and using an actual open wheeler. Now we'll know for sure if the curbs are good enough so we can continue the building process. And I missed the curb. Like an idiot. I try again, this time lightly touching it and I just assume that it's a bit too harsh. I also drive the whole lap to see if it's even possible and to discover some important information. Have I made the castle section too steep? Is it just gonna ruin the car? Yes. Yes I have. And yes it is. Also why the fuck is it day and night and day and night and day and night on the track? What the fuck is this god's disco? I fixed the curbs while watching the FIA award ceremony in the little video box like a proper Gen Z representative and test drive it again. It's good, it's all good. Also, I fixed the castle section. Now it only slightly unsettles the car. Time to hop back into Blender and place all the curbs. Knowing this will be a repetitive task, I watched some more FIA award ceremony. It was shit, by the way. While placing curb after curb after curb after curb after curb after curb. Done. I reluctantly plug my wheel in and do a lap in an actual F1 car that will be racing at this track, which goes Splendidly. With everything in almost working order, I proceed to my weakest part of the process. 
filling up the surrounding landscape. I never know how to do this shit. Honestly, I watch Dime's videos and try to decipher the way he does it, but I just don't know if I'm supposed to be detail oriented here or if I'm supposed to save time and performance by not putting too much detail. So I do neither and place too many vertices that are also lazily placed and can launch your car in the atmosphere. Like a professional would. Look at this hideous geometry, oh my god! When looking at tracks for inspiration, you can see that there's this green carpet thing just behind the curves and it apparently drives pretty well. So I decided to get the asphalt texture I had used and just kind of paint it green and slap it onto the original and call it green salt. I then proceed to green salt all the curbs around the track. Time to add some runoff areas. So whoever makes the slightest mistake ends up stranded and beached. I get some sand textures and adjust them to look semi-okay. I make this huge runoff into turn one and decide to wait with the other until I've made the barriers. What does every track need in order for every car not to finish the race like this? That's right, no Pirelli sponsorship. Also, a uh, pit lane. Because of my alarming incompetence, I delete the shit out of this hole expecting to lay down a new road when I could have just changed the material. Upon realizing this though, I had already ran out of undo moves and had to fill the hole I just deleted manually. I butcher the landscape some more, assign some materials, and after a shit ton of work that wasn't necessary at all, we have ourselves a pit lane. A pit lane also needs a pit line, specifically pit line sir, because there's two of them, which I promptly make along with the entry lane. Time for barriers! I want to promote myself and Tomo, so I'm making some custom banners. One with my channel, and the other just being a screenshot of Tomo's channel. After these two are done, I have literally no idea what to put in next, so onwards we go! Get concrete barrier, make physical banner, apply the banner I just made, and boom! We have a start finish barrier up and ready. Now for the barriers in the pits and the pit exit. Add some extra models of an old garage as a pit box and voila! Pits! For the castle section recreation, I found this amazing model of an... Arch. That will fit the theme perfectly. But as with the curbs, there are some things that just need to be done, and that is placing the barriers all around the track. So here's a time lapse of me placing the barriers. I place this barrier in a way so it tightens the track, therefore also need to adjust the line for it to make sense. Time to test. Yeah, perfectly okay. Nice. With the barriers in place, I am now allowed to place the sand. Amazing! Billboard! Let me place it and take care of that later. Trees! I tried placing trees as a background using Blender's particle system, but for reasons only known to the driest god's biscuit, this kept happening. Why are there trees spawning both on the thing and under the thing? What? I wasn't about to give up. I spent an hour fighting this. Long story short, I lost. Not wanting to face the reality of planting literally thousands of trees manually, I decided to instead import some low poly buildings and decorate the castle section with some 90s residential charm. I also found this Tori gate model, so now the part of the track where Suzuka begins is marked with a big ass Tori gate. But eventually, I have to face reality. So I plant the trees manually around the track while watching random YouTube videos. I ended up placing over 3000 of them manually. So to de-stress, I got some grandstands. I paint them pink and gray, Thomas circuit, Thomas colors. Time for another test drive. Where the f am I in a Ford Escort? Castle section, passable. Pits, drive throughable. Hotel, Trivago. You might notice that as I'm driving through the circuit, the trees look weird. It's as if they were missing something. I said, of course, I was refusing to acknowledge negative faces of my tree models, which I thought their tree shader was supposed to fix. I even watched a separate tutorial where I got the tree model from and the guy did exactly what I did and at this point I had no idea what to do and I sure as hell wasn't about to place thousands of trees again so fuck that. What's the next step? Decorating. I put some pit boxes, lights, all that good stuff. I write the track description, Tomo x Acero Corsa, pit boxes, 20, all that better stuff. You know these meter boards you can see on the tracks telling you how far you're from a corner? 
I need those, so I improvised some. Now, since the distance isn't the same in Blender and instead of Corsa, instead of making number boards, I just make these kind of artistic things. It just says 3, 2, and 1, and that's all you need anyway. Now that the track was functional, I needed to test it out properly with a motor race, okay? I record the AI racing lines by doing a few laps around the circuit myself. I prepare the first race on the best track in the world. 20 drivers. I give my control over to an AI so I can enjoy this magnum opus of a race. Yeah, but maybe, maybe if I chose actual F1 cars, maybe they will know what to do? This track is made for them after all. <sighs> Eventually I managed to figure everything out and made the racing work. Finally, racing. We went to car racing. If you like to get the track file so you can drive on it yourself, set some lap time records that are actually under two minutes unlike my unskilled ass, I've started a Patreon where I'll post this track for something stupid low, like $2 probably. I don't know, I haven't put the effort in yet. The profile currently looks like this. Link in description. Also, subscribe. And with that, the 2024 Formula 1 Margesta Grand Prix is about to start. The drivers are ready to qualify before the main race. Due to a lack of funds, this is just a one-shot qualifying. And here's a clip of Fernando Alonso taking pole position. Yes, I admit the track is a lot longer than I expected and it's a lot worse than I expected, though I am getting better and better at making them. Comment down below if you have any interesting track concept, whether from a YouTuber, driver, or even your own idea. If it's crazy enough and it has loops, crocodile pits, or rings of fire, put it there. Now, if you move your mouse, you'll see that the video is about to end. And therefore, there is no race in this video. Yes, I spent like a month making the track. Of course, I'm gonna stretch it to at least two videos. But I'll make it worth it. Probably. So definitely subscribe and next week or in three months, I'll upload the entire race to my channel. Is it evil of me to leave you on a cliffhanger? Possibly. Am I gonna care? Not too much. Hotel? Trivago.